In video games, just like in real life, we take gravity for granted. In the real world, the source of gravity is extremely complicated and even controversial. In video games, gravity is quite simple. It comes from a physics engine. And a physics engine gets its gravity from a very particular set of ones and zeros. But how exactly does video game gravity work? Of course, it varies video game to video game, physics engine to physics engine. Instead of talking about gravity in all sorts of games, I'm gonna just focus on games which feel to the player as if gravity is realistic. This excludes games like Metroid, Super Smash Bros, Borderlands, any game where gravity seems completely off from here on Earth. So that leaves mostly relatively, let me stress relatively, realistic games set on Earth. Why am I excluding those other games? Because I really just want to know how video game gravity compares to our own gravity. Is it generally stronger? Weaker? When does terminal velocity kick in? Can I kill R. Kelly by pushing him off a 10 meter tall building, or does it need to be from higher up? But before we can get into video game gravity, you need to know a little bit about real world gravity. Now the amount you need to know is much less than the amount I will tell you, but you won't know which parts are important until much later. Gravity is the third most important of the four fundamental forces, if you define importance by the amount of time you would live if all of a sudden the force was turned. Without gravity, people would start to float up into space, and people inside buildings would eventually suffocate as the atmosphere drifted away from Earth. The other three fundamental forces are electromagnetism, the strong force, and the weak force. Yes, that is what they are called. But gravity is actually the weakest force. It has infinite range to compensate, though. What that means for us is that we can stand really close to massive objects like Earth without getting crushed, while at the same time, we could stand millions of light years away from Earth and still feel its gravitational pull. Here on Earth, the strength of gravity is about 9.81 meters per second squared towards the center of the Earth. That means that every second, you are falling at an increasing rate towards the center of the Earth even right now. But of course, hopefully the ground is keeping you from moving. If not, maybe stop watching this video and get some help. This 9.81 meters per second squared number is usually denoted as little g and comes from a very simple equation. g equals big G, which is the gravitational constant, times the mass of the Earth, divided by the radius of the Earth squared. But wait, that isn't equal 9.81. That's because 9.81 comes from the average measurements across the Earth, and the Earth is not perfectly spherical, nor is its mass evenly distributed. You can actually test what the acceleration due to gravity is in your own home, albeit with the exactness of a tactical nuke. Of course, without knowing how far away you are from the center of the Earth, you can't use the equation I gave. So here is a different one. The time taken for an object to fall from rest to the ground is equal to the square root of two times the distance the object falls divided by the acceleration due to gravity. Just rearrange that bad boy and you can get G all by its lonesome. Now let's try this sucker out. After some quick experiments, the equation seems to be alright. From a height of 0.637 meters, I measured G to be 9.85 meters per second squared. And from 2.033 meters up, I got a G of 9.57 meters per second squared. The higher trials had a larger margin of error, so that explains the numbers being so different. Overall, not bad, not bad. For my local area, G should be 9.808. The experiment I just ran is exactly what I have done in 16 different games. Time can be easily measured by frame counting in pretty much every game, so it's quite straightforward. The only tricky part is figuring out on exactly which frame you start falling and on which frame you hit the ground. This will prove to be a source of error, along with being limited by the frame rate of the game. A 30 frames per second game allows for 33.3 repeating millisecond intervals to be measured, while 60 FPS allows half that, 16.6 repeating meaning it is twice as accurate. Since frame counting is such a big source of error, the higher a distance I can fall from, the better. Determining the height of the fall is the real tricky part, and it greatly limits which games I can test. Not every game has a way to measure distance, or has an object in the game with a known height. 
I used multiple different methods to measure fall distance, but I'll get to that when I talk about each game. This video originally started as an investigation into the fall damage of Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2019, since it seems to be incredibly strong, but it morphed into this monstrosity of a video once I measured the game's acceleration due to gravity and got an enigmatic result. I measured the distance fall in a couple of different ways. In Ground War games, there are distance markers for each objective, so I was able to calculate how far up I was on this building using the Pythagorean Theorem. This came out to 50.5 meters. There is also another measuring tool, which is much more convenient, but a little less accurate. The Precision Airstrike Binoculars. These can be pointed at the ground to give a fall distance. Using this technique, I measured myself to be 50 meters above the ground on this building, which is in rough agreement with my more hipster Pythagorean Theorem method. I also use the binocular method at 10 different fall heights from 2 to 40 meters. The lower values have a considerable margin of error, so keep that in mind. As for the acceleration due to gravity, I got these ranges of values, from 36 to 19.66 meters per second squared. This completely blindsided me when I first got these results. Really, I was shaken to my core, losing all grip on reality and space itself. First off, why are these values so much bigger than 9.81? Second, why is there such a huge range of values, over 15 meters per second squared? It seems like in general, the higher you fall from, gravity becomes weaker. That doesn't make sense, at least at these scales and to such a massive extent. Of course, air resistance likely plays a role, which would make it seem like gravity is getting weaker when in fact it is just the air slowing down the acceleration of the falling object. But still, no wonder fall damage is so strong. This gravity is as strong as on Jupiter, you definitely die from falling 10 meters up. I thought for a bit, got distracted and watched some YouTube. And then I remembered this old game theorists video covering Assassin's Creed 2, where MatPat discovered that the gravity in the Assassin's Creed 2 world was way greater than Earth's, 12.4 meters per second squared to be exact. So at least there was precedent from an, uh, credible outside source for games having a high gravitational acceleration. But as you know, since I already told you, I didn't stop there. I first tested Assassin's Creed 2's gravity myself, and instead of using MatPat's method of assuming Giotto's Campanile in-game is the same height as the real-world counterpart, I measured its height using a similar method as the Pythagorean method from Modern Warfare. Except instead of objectives, I used the waypoint system. The distance to the center of the waypoint is given with this number, which is not accompanied by units, but I have good reasons to assume it is in meters. Using this waypoint method, I measured the height at the top to be 65.8 meters, which is quite different from the real world height of 84.7 meters. The time to fall was 3.25 seconds, which means G equals 12.46 in Assassin's Creed 2, according to my testing. This is surprisingly close to the game theorist's number of 12.4 meters per second squared, which I can only explain as them overestimating the time to fall, which would cancel out with their overestimation of the height of the fall. I also ran this test using St. Mark's Campanile, finding its height to be 63.2 meters, compared to the real world height of 98.6 meters. G was equal to 12.71, which is pretty close to the previous 12.37. I then did a couple tests from heights of less than 2 meters, just estimating the heights of objects using Ezio's given height of 6 meters, <laughs> 6 meters, 6 feet, and I found G equals 17.46 at 0.97 meters, and G equals 16.10 at 1.88 meters. I didn't do as extensive of testing in Assassin's Creed or other games as I did with Modern Warfare, because I didn't feel like it and it really just isn't all that necessary. I next tested two other Call of Duties to see if the whole Jupiter-style gravity was common across all of them. With Modern Warfare 3, I used the XM25 to measure distance and found G to be 20.7 at a height of 50 meters, and G equals 24.4 at 11 meters. Again, very high numbers that follow the trend of higher fall equals less gravity. Then with Call of Duty 2, I used a completely different measurement method, as there are no in-game distances displayed as far as I'm aware. So I 
cheated a bit and assumed the Point du Hoc cliffside from the mysteriously named mission, the Battle of Point du Hoc, is 30 meters tall. So G equals 22.4, another very high number. Now I'll quickly run through the other 11 games, briefly explaining my measurement method, and give an acceleration due to gravity value for each. Battlefield 3. The helicopter gives an altitude reading, which is super handy for this. I found G equals 22.42 at 182.4 meters. Fallout 3. There are two methods I used, so there are two values for G. The first method was to assume the Lincoln Memorial in-game was scaled to the exact dimensions of the real-life Lincoln Memorial. This wall right here is 4.28 meters in real life, which gives a G value of 18.36. For the other method, I used my companion Fox, who's about 7 foot 8 according to lore, to find the height of the wall. With this, it is 3.57 meters, so G equals 15.3. Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon, which is an incredibly unrealistic game, but it runs on the same engine as Far Cry 3, which is an incredibly realistic game. Falling from this structure, which is approximately 9 meters tall, using the waypoint method, G equals 12.9. At another location 6 meters up, G equals 10.55. Batman Arkham Knight. I used the waypoint method again and fell down from 286.94 meters. Uh oh. Yeah, that messes things up, but not to worry. Just find the height at which you slow yourself down and subtract that from the total height. So the height to use is 275.4 meters, making G equal to 20.1. Goat Simulator. On top of this giant crane, the height is 54.3 meters, which I got from assuming each rung of the ladder is 12 inches, which is the real life standard and is corroborated by the height of the two shipping containers off to the side, which have a standardized height. So G equals 12.1. Grand Theft Auto 5. Thankfully, the game tells you the exact height of your furthest fall that you survived. I tested gravity at two different heights, 5.18 meters and 13.18 meters, and got G equaling 18.4 and 16.43, respectively. Battlefield Bad Company 2 Similar to the Modern Warfare objective method, except the objective marker is 7 meters above the ground, and I fell from 2 meters above the objective marker, so I found G equal to 16.1. Now with Halo 3, you might expect gravity to be quite less than in real life, since the game feels kind of floaty, but actually, I found it to be 11.76 or 12.24 meters per second squared. Since I don't believe there are distance markers I could have used, I measured the height of Master Chief's jumps. One estimate assumes he jumps 3 meters, which I got from outside lore. The other estimate assumes the Marine is 6 feet tall. Insurgency Sandstorm. Here, I did the same thing as with Bad Company 2, so the fall was 7 meters, with G equal to 15 meters per second squared. I then tried the Pythagorean objective method and got a height of 9.34 meters and G equal to 14.7. And finally, Portal. Portal doesn't have a traditional way to measure distance, and there are no real-world locations to use, but there is an objective you get for free-falling 30,000 feet which is 9,144 meters. I timed my fall until I heard the start of the achievement sound start to play, and got 328.23 seconds. That would mean G equals 0.17 meters per second squared. Well, that can't be right. That's one-tenth the gravity of the moon. What's wrong here is I didn't take into account air resistance. I've been purposely avoiding it because it doesn't have too much of an effect with the other calculations, but here it is unavoidable. The fall 30,000 feet achievement is after all called terminal velocity, which is the maximum speed a falling object can reach due to air resistance working against gravity. Pause. Okay, so, well, computer, uh, play some nice gameplay for the people. Uh, something a little more modern? Uh, something that came out recently, you know, past couple months. <laughs> very funny, computer. Very funny. But you're being dumb, so... Sorry, we're gonna have to uh, go back to the normal style of narration. Sorry, folks. What I was trying to say is... 
I decided to split this video in half. It originally was going to be 26 minutes or so, but it was taking me so long to edit, I thought it would be best to split it here. I did this not to get more views or anything like that. I have plenty of views at this point. There are really three reasons I did this. One, I recently hit 10,000 subscribers. Yay! That's something I really never thought would happen, and it just kind of did all of a sudden. But instead of uploading a dedicated video about it, I wanted to put it in here because a standalone milestone video can be pretty lame sometimes, especially if I was making it. So if you subscribe to me, thank, thank you, you kind, kind sir, for liking at least one of my videos enough to think you want to see more. But on the other hand, it wouldn't be so bad if I stayed at around this size of a channel. I'm pretty content wherever I'm at. So that's the main reason the video was split in two, so I could get the milestone announcement up earlier. Second reason? 26 minutes is a really long video, and it was taking me a surprisingly long time to make. I recorded the voiceover for this video on November 17th. Yeah, quite a while ago. I didn't work on it much over winter break, but still, that's a bit too long for me. And third, I'm not 100% satisfied with part two just yet. I haven't edited any of it, of course, but I wasn't completely confident in the script. Part 2 is basically my explanation for why gravity appears to be so weird in all the games I tested, and it took me a long time to come up with what I thought was happening. I'm still going over the math a bit. I'm also a bit worn out on hearing falling this and meters per second squared that, so I'm going to make a different video in between this and Part 2. It will be a LEGO-based video, if you were wondering. So that's all from me for now. And even if you never, ever subscribe to me, thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.